erectile dysfunction is a common problem and the issue associated with most of the sexually active men and the dysfunction progresses as the age progresses. Majority of the patients, they do not require any surgical procedure like penile implants. How are yours? I am Dr. D.V.S. Ellen Sharma, Senior Consultant in Urology, Laparoscopy, Robotic and Andrology Services. I have been associated with the Apollo Hospital for the last 22 years. And then one area of specialization for me is like erectile dysfunction and then andrology. So the common myth is erectile dysfunction is the only one condition which requires a surgical condition, surgical procedures. No, it's not correct. Majority of the erectile dysfunction previously thought to be either psychogenic, but it is a myth. Most of the patients do either have a organic condition or may be associated with the stress and psychological things. Basically, erection is like pumping the blood into the penis and which should be sufficient for the person to perform sex, that is the penetration, and reach the climax. As far as you consider, the penis is like a tube which should be filled with the blood. It is guided by three common things. One, the neurological output, the vascular output, and the hormonal conditions, and the situations in the environmental and the social conditions under which he is performing the sex. Most of the men, either they come to me or contact me or phone, usually they come back with a single complaint. Sir, I have an erectile dysfunction. I said, just wait, 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 wait. Don't come to your conclusion. What exactly is the problem? When once we talk to the patient and then when we get the repo, they come out with different, different symptoms. Not all symptoms of erectile dysfunction. Some people do have a premature ejaculation. That is the second part of the erection in the process of sex. They do attribute this as erectile dysfunction. The common problem for the erectile dysfunction, either it is a vascular is it or hormonal, or it is related to the drugs or psychological stress. Underlying organic condition is one of the few important things one should be stressed about. Those patients who undergo pelvic surgery or spine surgery, those who undergo any penile and urethral surgeries, the prostatic surgery or the bladder, radical surgeries, cancers, they are all the guys who can experience erectile dysfunction besides the common age group between and the, who are sexually active. The first thing we ask the patient to come and see me, the moment the patient walks into my clinic, I usually greet him and then say, hi, hello, how are you? And then what are the issues associated with this? The fundamental basic thing is, we usually inquire whether he has diabetes, blood pressure, has been taking any medications, either for gastric or blood pressure medications, seizure medications, or any medical history other than this, including the drugs, what they use, marijuana and others. The second thing is we ask, is it a recently onset one, it's been there for a while. Once we carefully look into the medical history and the drug history, we usually examine the patient and ask him whether there is any surgical history, either in the form of a stroke or childhood infections or in the back or any mumps or something else, whether they have any erectile dysfunction because of the underlying spine, pelvic and retroperitoneal surgeries. Once the examination part starts, then we usually examine the peripheral vessels, take the blood pressure and then examine the patient completely, how the secondary sexual characters and rest of the things. The next thing that comes is the hormonal status. Clinically, you can assess the testes, secondary sexual characters and presence or absence of this gynecomasia, their physical features and rest of the things. Once we come to a conclusion that the most of the patients when we examine, they do not have any physically appearing underlying issues. Then we ask the blood chemistry right from the basic hemoglobin, blood sugars, creatinine and other tests. Then comes the important tests like a hormonal status and then the vascular tree. Two common fundamental things here. One is the how is the blood, how is the blood flow into the penis and then how are the guiding factors. So we assess this by a simple test called penile Doppler. The penile Doppler is the one which assesses the flow of blood into the penis and that gives the actual turgidity, the velocities before and after giving a special injection into the penis and then we reassess how is the erection, how is the turgidity, how long does it last and rest of the things. We assess one, the, the integrity of the circulation by hormonal, by the vascular tree 
and then if there is sufficient blood flow and then maintain sufficient direction whether there is a early blood flow and then early leak of blood patient do experience early loss of erection in the form of a detumescence so once we come to know, we divide the patient whether he has got any organic problem. The organic problem can be the target organ is the penis or the blood vessel that supply or there may be a neural issues or maybe the medications or maybe the surgeries in the retroperitoneum or in the pelvis. Once the basic assessment is done, we divide the patients whose the circuit is intact. The circuit in the sense of brain, spine, retroperitoneum, vessels, neurological, hormonal and then we look into this other factors like the social relation with the partner and then his fantasies about the surgery and childhood issues all these things we dealt with and then we have a team of doctors like me and the psychiatrist and then endocrinologist and then a physician who assess the patient as a whole our approach towards erectile dysfunction is a multi-modality approach so the first thing is we reassure the patient when the organic condition is not there and then we start them with the smaller medications we ask them to take the medication at night as well as the supportive medication and medication to make him erect just one hour before surgery, the sex or three hours before the sex depending upon the need of the patient we always keep the condition his cardiac condition also in mind and then as well as the seizures and other things where how to modify the medications that is by the neurologist, diabetician, physician, endocrinologist and then rest of the things. Once we reassess the patient after a week days and then comes after 15 days and then I will ask them to come along with the partner, we assess them individually, our social activists as well as the physician, neurophysician, diabetologist and then me we always as well as the counsellor they reassess the patient and then we'll come to a conclusion that whether he is doing well with the medications or not doing well if there is any psychological issue or with the psychiatric and other things my the counsellor and the psychiatrist will reassess the patient and then treat accordingly if there is no improvement with the medication then we'll give you the next option best option is the penile implant and I have uh, over 100 cases of penile implant surgeries in the last 20-22 years so we are well versed with the different different models where we have a two cylinder and then three piece cylinder where the rigid, semi rigid and then flexible the penile implants we offer to the patient and then we'll make them as a normal man and then he will continue the, to have a sex as before. Thank you.